This is where the world's most wanted terrorist met his end after an operation by U.S. special forces. During the raid, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi was cornered before he detonated an explosive vest, ending his reign as the leader of the so-called Islamic State. He was a sick and depraved man, and now he's dead. He's dead. He's dead as a doornail. As the American president took a victory lap, the Pentagon provided more details about the operation inside Syria, which came after the U.S. received specific intelligence about Baghdadi's location. Baghdadi's death will not rid the world of terrorism or end the ongoing conflict in Syria. But it will certainly send a message to those who would question America's resolve. ISIS has lost its physical territory and now its leader. But its reach is driven largely by ideology. Sympathizers around the world have carried out brutal attacks all on their own. With the U.S. pulling back its forces in northern Syria, experts warn it will be nearly impossible to keep up the pressure on the terrorists' former home base. The follow-up from this operation, I think, will be uh, extremely difficult, which is unfortunate. There's already a risk that thousands of ISIS fighters could return to battle. They're currently held in prisons in northern Syria that had been under Kurdish control until the Kurds were forced to flee to make way for a Turkish invasion. Then there's the matter of Syria's oil fields, which the U.S. says it will guard. We are still committed to the counter-ISIS campaign, and we don't want them to resurge. They get a lot of their revenues from that. Ironically, the Kurds, recently abandoned by the Americans, provided the key intelligence needed for this raid. That included a stolen pair of Baghdadi's underwear, which was used for DNA verification, as well as access to someone in Baghdadi's inner circle, someone who could give them a room-by-room -room layout of the compound where the terrorist leader was hiding. Donna? Jackson, thanks.